Planning Board for Tuesday, July 18th. Let me remind everyone who will address the board to make sure you sign in on the clipboard there. I don't think we'll have any. Um, make sure your <laughs> microphones are turned on and speak clearly into them. By way of announcement, our next planning board meeting is September 5th, 2017 at 7 p.m. in this, the Ma Matthew Thornton room. Let me appoint both Nelson and Paul into voting positions, which will give us the quorum. That, well, actually, we had a quorum without that, but that gives us uh, more voting members. And with that, uh, our first item on the agenda, our second item on the agenda is planning and zoning administrator's report. Robert, is there anything tonight? Uh, no, I've got nothing. Congratulations on your promotion. Yeah, you. <laughs> you, you deserve it. Well deserved. Glad to have it. So, congratulations to you. Um, are there any questions by members of this board for the staff? Seeing none. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, just on the subject for the. Uh, listening public, I'm not sure everyone knows that Julian has left, and I, I don't know if that's been publicly announced at this at one of our yeah. meetings. I, I know uh, a staff email was going was circulated, and all the uh, board members have been informed. So I would think it's pretty public at this point. Developers have actually approached and said congratulations to her as well. Yeah. Um, I was going to mention something under other items, but you can certainly yeah. do so now so if you'd like. <laughs> Uh, yes, obviously we want to extend our thanks to Jillian for all the work that she's done and congratulations to her on a uh, career move in the direction that she wants it to go in and uh, she's been great to work with as well. I'm pretty sure that Tim made that announcement at the last meeting because they was, he was also making an announcement that he was um, seeking you know, new, new candidates for the position or that okay. there would be some hiring mistake. process okay, that I resulted from that. So, it, it, but anyway, it never hurts to do it again just because yes. we're thankful for Jillian's help and also happy to see Robert get uh, kicked upstairs, I guess. <laughs> Not really upstairs. <laughs> That's a kicking. Kicked. Yeah. kicked. <laughs> Elevated to the period. There you go. Um, are there any other comments or questions by members of the board for the staff? Seeing none. Um, by way of announcement, and we'll sort of get to with both of our next agenda items. There's a request for a continuance for both of the substantive items. We have three and four, um, but let me read three into the record so that we can begin taking that up. William Lestalka is the applicant and Land of Goshen LLC is the owner. Continued review for consideration of final approval of a subdivision plan for a 12 lot cluster subdivision. The parcels located at 6 Watkins Road in the R1 residential and aquifer conservation districts and wellhead protection area tax map 4C lot 449. The item is continued from the June 20th and July 18th, 2017 planning board meetings. Uh, with that, I have an email from Chad Brannan indicating that they're working their way through the CLD review and the information that they've received and they've asked that we continue it to our next scheduled meeting, which is September 5th. Robert, if we continue to September 5th, is that appropriate amount of time to make it on the agenda or? Yes, it is. Okay. With that in mind, what's the will of the board? Mr. Chairman, I might make a motion that we accept the request of the applicant for the continuance to September the 5th, 2017 at 7 p.m. in this room. With no further notice to With no us. further notice to about us. Thank you. Is there a second for Alistair's motion? Mike. Mike has the second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? One, two, three, six, zero, zero, two, continue that one. Um, with that, item four on our agenda is Brett W. Vaughn as the applicant and Brett W. Vaughn Revocable Trust as the owner. Review for consideration of final approval of a 13 lot residential subdivision. The parcel is located at 123 Wilson Hill Road in the R1 residential district, tax <coughs> map 4A, lot 23. The item has been continued from the July 18th, 2017 planning board meeting. And I also have an email from Chad Brennan as to that one uh, with ex essentially the same explanation that there is some CLD review that they're working through and they request a continuance to September 5th. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion. We grant the request of the applicant for a continuance to the September the 5th, 2017 meeting at 7 p.m. in this room with no further notice to abut us. Is there a second for Alistair's motion? Mike has a second on that motion. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Any abstaining? 600 to continue that item. Uh, so item five on our agenda is discussion possible action regarding other items of concern. Um, the only thing that I would offer for a discussion item is that several of us uh, attended the school board's meeting yesterday at their invitation to discuss um, some of the comments that we offered to them following our capital improvement plan review last year about the potential development of their uh, new uh, SAU office. 
um, we had suggested uh, in a narrative part of our message to them that they consider whether it's uh, viable to expand the SAU office or to uh, create a new SAU office by an expansion to the high school. And they wanted to know sort of how far and, and to what level they wanted we want or expected them to investigate that because doing so would incur some costs. And so we had a, a nice visit with them and explained that we weren't necessarily looking for anything in particular as much as uh, to see that the idea um, was given reasonable consideration. Um, and if you have any other uh, interest in the details of that, I'm sure that the video of it will be on Merrimack TV and you'll get a chance to see it. Um, I don't have any other items of concern or discussion. Does anyone else? Tom? I wanted to uh, bring up a sore subject, flashing signs. Um, they seem to be popping up all over town uh, at an alarming rate. Uh, specifically at the new Wood Spring Suites Hotel, their sign out front is changing about every five seconds or something like that, and uh, okay. it's fairly bright. And also at the Innovations Day Spa, down on uh, the cutoff near Amherst Street. Um, they've put up a brand new sign that's fairly bright and that changes quite regularly and it's difficult to read, so it's even more distracting because you see this blur and you're trying to figure out what it is. And I'm just wondering if we can at least send them letters explaining the regulations and asking them to be in compliance as a starting point at least. That makes sense. I think Wood Springs is probably new to town and may not have been completely tuned into it, but it the spa been. probably has been. Um, Robert, uh, in the past, um, there's been different uh, requirements to get a service request from the department to go do these things. Sometimes it's just been a comment from the board that's done it, and sometimes you've asked or someone has asked for us to send a note or an email or something. What is it that we need to do, if anything? Yeah, the, uh, the guidance that I can have on that for you is I can email you a form. Uh, we're required now just service request form for anything that needs to be followed up on. Um, formally like that, so I can email you a form, just kind of type that Me out. Me too, please. I've got a couple. Absolutely. And Me Nelson too. as well. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> all right. You should br bring a whole and folder up. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all to do with well, my case, is sign, signs, going and more going. signs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there are. Hopefully the form is relatively simple, so it's not particularly burdensome. For no, it, not information. at all. Basically, there's a space in the middle of it for you just to type the nature of the complaint and provide an address and whatever, so you can just fill that part out and we can look up the map and lot and everything else. But, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. Uh, any other comments or questions? Discuss, Nelson. New, new subject. Uh, this uh, postponement tonight reminds me of how many times we have already postponed these and some of these other things to dates certain that don't seem to be uh, met by the applicants. And uh, I just think we ought to look hard at these kind of uh, postponements. I know we've already done it on these two now. But um, it seems to me that uh, they've had a, more than enough time to get their act together on something like Watkins Road and, and, and Mr. Brett as well, although he's got some special problems. Uh, Watkins Road just hasn't gotten around to doing things, and they put it off two weeks at a time. And um, I, I, I would like us to reconsider that, uh, that policy. That's okay. all. I think we've had similar discussions in the past yes. where the idea was if someone's got kind of a pattern of doing this, then we continue them for a month or a month and a half rather than for two weeks so that we're deciding that they need more time than they think they need. Um, but I don't think that I would support ever sort of turning down someone's continuance and having them have to, you know, continue when they're not ready or refile an application or something like that because I think ultimately there's some level of being um, reasonable in the procedure that I'd always want to advocate so it's so that the town seems like it's open for business um, but um, in terms of when you really feel like someone's not quite gonna get there in the two weeks that they promised you if uh, we have in the past sort of decided at times maybe with the meeting after that or the one after that is the one we're going to aim for. Um, we've already decided these, but I don't know I if know anyone knows. I know decided the, yeah. these, but the one, they've been there since June. You know, we've yep. gone through the whole summer now. And well, now can I, in, in defense of the applicants, which is, I find it hard to be, but just for once I'll be the devil's advocate. <laughs> the, the one for Mr. La Stolqua 
if you remember the first meeting, which was the June 20th meeting, we basically couldn't even do anything with it because they'd got all their data yeah, we didn't wrong. Even find so it really, the July, the July 18th really was his first attempt at actually presenting something. And as far as Mr. Vaughan's concerned, actually the July 18th meeting was the first time they actually came with a formal application. I know we've been talking about Mr. Vaughan for over, I guess, 18 months, but that was the first meeting. He finally actually put his pen to paper and asked for an no, application. That's true. It was decided that it was complete in July because all of the other things were conceptual reviews and things. Um, okay. One of the things, though, that made this come up last time, which is kind of the situation we're in tonight, when we convene a meeting when everybody's got better things to do just so that we can continue some things and I think that there was once a year or so ago where we came in on a night where it was snowy and we had you know barely four people just for the sake of continuing something and I found it really irritating to do that um, especially if you know you're trying to call somebody up and say hey can you get out here we, we only have three we need four that sort of thing so uh, message well taken um, I don't know if we want to sort of make a policy or a decision or just sort of think of things as they come along. I, I understand your point of view, th assuming I can talk now. Okay. Um, I understand your point of view, but I certainly agree with, with Nelson. These things came out afternoon today asking for a continuance. They clearly have known for more than less than, what, seven hours that they didn't have their act together. That, you know <laughs> well actually again I hate to start being the devil's advocate <laughs> but actually sitting in the, my mother's sitting room on Thursday of last week Tim cancelled the meeting indicating that the, he thought there were going to be continuances so in a way they'd already hinted I think at, at middle of last end of last week would I be right yeah so that's um, <clears throat> The vice chair and I participate with Tim in kind of a, a telephone call to prepare for a meeting. And, and on Friday of last week, Tim indicated to us we hadn't received any new information on either of these applicants, and he thinks it was likely that they were going to be continued because of that. So although we got a bit of a heads up, that isn't necessarily available to any of the rest of the board members to, to know that. And then obviously the official request is exactly what you say it is, something that didn't actually get asked for until afternoon in this particular case I can actually make it pretty simple mm -hmm. um, the August the other August meeting ended up being canceled for lack of an agenda item and you're required by state law to have one meeting a month anyway so we kind of were stuck you have to meet anyway for this oh. one yeah yeah certainly so <laughs> um, and and these because their first meeting was July and and this is actually their first continuance it isn't necessarily that these are the best examples of this yeah. pattern that we've had in the past but we've certainly um, been been very very free with with granting continuances and frankly if we've got business on the agenda that we would be here for anyway it doesn't even seem to bother me that we've granted a continuance but it wouldn't necessarily but like Nelson said if in fact it becomes a pattern then it feels like we ought to do something to push back a little bit and yeah. say this is being rude well, you know, nothing I, else. <laughs> I, I think that it does that, but also I, I, it, there's a negative effect of these continuances on the abutters who are trying to follow mm -hmm. along and come attend. Absolutely. Because they only get the notices by what we say in the meeting, and if they aren't in the meeting, and then they don't get them. And they That's don't right. get them, and or or even when they do get them, they've got to remember to write them down and keep track of them because they didn't get anything in the mail, and um, you know that that is a more difficult thing. Well, in fact, so, the two couples who came out tonight, in fact, for Mr. Vaughan's, you know, they wasted their evening to some extent. I mean, they could do something with it, but I mean, yeah, they came out. Yeah. And um, at the same time, if we um, if we put a rule that says you got to request a continuance a couple of days ahead of time or something like that, um, then Mr. Vaughan would be here tonight because he didn't request it two or three days in advance, but he wouldn't have any information to let us. Yeah. take some action so we'd have a nice full discussion and hear from the neighbors and have a public hearing and all for what to what end because we'd end up continuing it anyway so yeah I don't it's kind, know. Of, it's kind of just the way it goes well, but it you could also if the pattern continues you could also require that they do reissue notice to the abutters as to, uh, ways to help avoid wearing them out with these uh, constant continuances of with no additional notice so they kind of get lost as a part of the same discussion, a, a similar, 
or, or maybe a different symptom of the same thing seems to have cropped up a few times where the applicants think they show up on Tuesday with new information, a new plan, or a new something, and expect us to be able to absorb and do something with it. Yeah. Yeah. And we've been spot. very accommodating, uh, and we pushed back a little bit on some of the applicants when it was just really too much. But um, I, I feel like I've pushed you guys to be accommodating to them more than perhaps I should have. And maybe a rule about that as well, that if they've got, mm -hmm. if they owe us some new information or a new plan, that that's got to be received some period of time before the meeting too. Robert, when do packages go in the mail? I Friday believe Friday afternoon, yeah. Friday. So in terms of the impact on yeah. us, that that's would be important. the important deadline that's important. in time to make that yeah. package. Yeah, and in, in this case, we were looking for plans from these folks, uh, I believe, like Wednesday, uh, Wednesday noon or something, to even be Tuesday close of business, so we had time to prepare a new memo, actually look through the plans. and. We've had, they've had a couple of instances where they've not come in. They've come in even Thursday, and we've worked really hard to get that review done for you guys. But it's getting to be a little taxing when that does happen. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know that we even have a, a document in which you would make a policy to create some sort of a written kind of a thing. But um, I think that at some point, if you have the sense that an applicant is um, just kind of malingering and not really working at things as, as fast as they could and you know, nothing really happens until 15 minutes before a meeting, I think um, having some kind of a guideline or rule that says if they don't have information in time to make the package, then they're going to get continued and they have to re-notice the, the, the abutters um, could be a way to tighten up some of that stuff when it's being abused, but I don't want to have sort of a hard and fast rule that makes us be <coughs> kind of the difficult planning board to deal with. Um, I don't know what everybody thinks of that kind uh, of an I'd, idea. I would concur so, with that. Yeah. Um, and that, I think, helps the, the yeah. staff as well. Um, if we had that rule in place for these two applicants, and again, these guys have not been abusing it, but we wouldn't have had to meet today because the only time we have to meet to continue something is so that they can avoid noticing the abutters. If we had a rule that said that they had to do that, there wouldn't be a need to come in here and vote on a continuance. Um, that's all that a continuance does is substitute for that notice. So, okay. Anything else? Somebody ruined my effort at a world record past meeting. <laughs> this discussion. Uh, if there are no other items of concern, we have the approval of the minutes of July 18th, 2017 on our agenda. What's the will of the board with respect to those? Mr. Chairman, I make the motion we accept the minutes as stated, printed. Is there a second for that motion? Paul. Paul gets the second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? I'm abstaining. Council Koenig abstaining. So 501. What's that? I wasn't you weren't even yeah. here. No, you um, and with that, that brings us to item seven on our agenda, which is to Mr. adjourn. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we adjourn. Is there a second for that motion? Mike? Mike has the second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? We are adjourned. Uh, don't forget to turn your microphones off and thank you, everyone.